Today's video is going to be a sort of a limited budget meal preparation challenge with a difference. I'll be using the Too Good To Go app for most of the shopping. A lot of people have suggested something like this. I'm not sure how it'll work out because I live sort of a little bit out in the sticks. And I think this app probably works better, or at least yields more choices, in more urban settings. So I had to set the search radius to the maximum and look around a bit. And the travel cost to pick up my surprise bag will not be part of the budget. Anyway, some other rules and parameters. I'll choose a surprise bag from the app to a maximum value of £4. And on top of that, £1 to spend at a regular supermarket to round out and supplement whatever is in the surprise bag. From this, I have to make three meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner for two people, myself and Jenny. Usual things are permitted, travel, kitchen facilities, power and water. We'll leave foraging out this time, but allow a small amount of seasoning and flavouring and cooking items that you might find in the average kitchen. Salt, pepper, a splash of oil, a few herbs and spices, simple sauces like ketchup or mustard or soy, nothing fancy like truffles or saffron, nothing that adds a significant food value like rice, and nothing that's a whole purchased item all on its own, like a tin of beans or tuna. For the £1 spend in the supermarket, reduced items and special offers are permitted. Any change I get from the £4 allowance on the Too Good To Go app will not be added to the pound for the supermarket shopping. So for my Too Good To Go bag, I chose one described as groceries from a spa convenience store near Dorchester, costing £3.39. 61 pence under budget. So let's go and grab that surprise bag and then take a look inside, then go shopping. OK, slight change of plan. My Too Good To Go bag from spa in Poundbury was cancelled. And I've gone to, I've gone for a second option, which is from this BP m and near Weymouth. Okay, I'm just gonna go and get my bag and we'll have a look at it. Okay, right, I've got my bag. Let's have a look and see what we've got inside of there. And then I can decide what else I need to get. So that looks like a custard Danish. That looks like an apple turnover. Well, there's breakfast. We've got mushroom arancini. We've got <laughs> Three onions. Jenny will not be best pleased. She's not a massive fan of onions. And I've got posh dog sausages with a dip. That's it. Wow, that's not an awful lot for four quid, is it? Okay, well, we'll go and see what we can get for a pound additionally. And yeah, I don't know what we're going to make. Well, can't pretend to be massively impressed with the contents of that too good to go bag. I mean, it's probably not bad for four quid, but it's not really... Got a lot of potential, and not on face value. Let's see what we can get in Morrison's with the remaining pound. Now a bit of time pressure here because we've got only about uh, 50 minutes till this closes and that's normally about how much time I spend wandering around looking for what to buy. So, right there is some loose fruit. There is some loose vegetables. Let's see if we can get the reduced section so what we can find there. Okay, reduced clearance. section that will actually even fit my budget. Loaf of bread, two pound ten. A white toasty. These are reduced prices, right? Same for my price. 
Teddy bear crumpets, 38 pence. Well, it's about the only thing I've seen so far that even fits the budget properly. I don't know. Just not very impressed with these reductions. How much is one of these wholemeal loaves? 27 pence. Okay, well, there's that. Bread. But how are we going to fit everything else? is going to be that bread because that's something at least. Well, I have to say, this is very disappointing. There are quite a few reduced things here, but they're still not even reduced down to prices I can stretch to. So £1.11 for a bag of stir fry vegetables. for a little pack of Singapore noodles. I'm just trying to look for something that will make it possible to bring together those other ingredients I've got. So there's a pack of mushrooms here I could get for 90 pence. No loose mushrooms. Oh, there are. Loose mushrooms, £3.10 per kilo. Pound sixty, so it's not bad actually. I could get some mushrooms and make a mushroom soup. Uh, carrots reduced down to what carrots used to be before the prices went up. So this is reduced down to forty-one pence. Oh, I hate always getting carrots for these things, but at the moment. That is now. Well, that was cheaper. That's thirty pence. Yeah, I hate always getting carrots, but um, at the moment it's not looking like there's a lot of other options. What have we got here? Potatoes. Oh, sweet potatoes, but. Yeah, no, we're getting sweet potatoes. Even though there's probably more food energy than the carrots. We got that in the bread. So we've got sweet potatoes, we got that. So that's 51 pence, 78 pence. We've got 22 pence left. small can, 27 pence for a big can. Let me just check my maths again. 51, 71, 78, 22 left. There's nothing. 19 pence for a pack of spaghetti hoops. But that's literally all we can get. There's 34 pence for a tin of tomatoes, 65 pence for tomato puree. Well, so they've obviously done their final reductions on this lot, if they do final reductions here. And yeah, nothing is really within reach of, uh, of the budget. This is hugely disappointing. I don't know really what to say. We could get this pot of yogurt. Get that instead of what? 
Okay, well, I guess that's going to be it then. Right, well, that was that. Here's the haul. So from the Too Good To Go bag, which was £4, Cheesy Mushroom Arancini, and that was originally £4.25, reduced down to 2 pounds and then given to me as part of this bag. Posh Dog Sausages with Tomato Ketchup. It was originally £2.50, reduced down to one ninety four before it went in the bag, but that is ridiculously expensive. My Danish pastry, so we got, uh, that was originally, how much did that originally cost? We can't see. Donate, but there's a custard Danish and an apple turnover. And three large red onions, which was originally £1.45, reduced down to 39 pence before it went in the bag. So that's the haul from Too Good To Go. I'm kind of disappointed. Maybe it's just the choice of shop was the problem. I went to a convenience store that was part of a garage, part of a petrol station. So maybe that's just the problem, that they're going to have these kind of expensive little nonsense things. Maybe it's my fault. And then after I picked this up, the only shop that was open to go and spend my pound was Morrison's, which is not the cheapest supermarket, as people will no doubt tell me. And I got a wholemeal loaf for 27 pence. Now that was 75 pence, which is not a bad price for a wholemeal loaf. All things considered, I got a pack of spaghetti hoops, which I think was 19 pence, and four sweet potatoes, which was reduced down from 69, 69 pence to 51. The reductions were really not that spectacular. Anyway, that's the haul. Now, here's the thing. I'm not doing this. I'm not going to put Jenny through this. I originally intended to make this the budget for two of us for three meals. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to put Jenny through that, mainly because Jenny can't eat a lot of onions. Uh, so it really would be rather unfair. And since the only vegetables we've really got is onions and sweet potatoes, because everything else was too expensive, I'm not going to put her through it. So here's the plan. I'm going to divide this in half and half of this will be my food for tomorrow. So I'll be able to use up to half this loaf of bread. I'll choose one of these Danish pastries. I'll have half of these sausages and half that ketchup and I'll have half of these things and one and a half onions and two sweet potatoes and half a tin or whatever and that will be me trying to make three meals out of that. I'm still not confident I'm going to make actually three meals that aren't utterly absurd but we'll have a go. You can probably tell from my voice I'm disappointed. Anyway to make this video not a complete disaster after we've done that I'm going to go out with the same amount of money so five pounds, four pounds that I spent on the bag of Too Good To Go and one pound for the top up. I'm gonna go out with five pounds to a supermarket and buy just what I wanna buy up to a value of five pounds. And we'll see if I can make three meals for two of us on that budget, just regular supermarket shopping. Because honestly, I just don't really think, because this is kind of ready meal type of stuff, and that's, I don't even know what that is. What is that snacking on the go or something like that? Because that's what that is. It started expensive, so by the time it's reduced, okay, it's now reduced to whatever these prices are, and now it's down to four pounds, obviously, when it's all in the bag, but I think I've talked enough. That's the plan, I'm not putting Jenny through it. I'll put myself through it for the sake of your entertainment. I'm not gonna subject Jenny to that kind of treatment. She doesn't deserve it. So, see you at breakfast. Well, for breakfast, I'm gonna have the custard Danish. I think I'll probably throw that in the microwave for a few seconds, just to try and bring it back to life and it'll probably make it really weird but at the moment it's kind of cold and stale because it was kind of already out of date oh dear that was about 12 seconds so i don't think there's really going to be very much to say about breakfast well i can tell you whether putting it in the microwave did revive it and make it palatable or whether it made it weird Actually, that's all right. Today's meals, I think, are going to be a bit poor on vitamins and protein. Well, that was breakfast. I mean, that was okay. That was quite nice. And often for breakfast, I wouldn't normally eat more than that. That was just a part of carbs, though. I suppose now it's time for me to try and think about what I'm going to do with all those bits and bobs to try and make something for lunch. I'll start putting a plan together. Right, well, lunch, I'm going to try and make something out of... Well, I've got one and a half onions, two sweet potatoes, and half of these sausages in total for the day. So lunch, I'm going to make something out of one of these potatoes. 
sweet potatoes, which is the nicest looking one. I think that one. We'll have one of these onions, and yeah, half of those sausages, which I think is three. So the onion. It's a decent onion. I'm going to chop that up and fry it and caramelize it. I'm going to make an onion soup. Let's see. Yep, so we are going to have three little cocktail sausages with that because that's half of what's there. Very sad little sausages. I'm just going to fry those a little bit first and just see if I can bring them back to life a bit. A little splash of oil is permitted. Meanwhile, my sweet potato. Well, I'd like to bake it, but I'm not going to put the oven on for one sweet potato. So I'm just going to cut a little slit along the top like that. You might see why in a minute if this succeeds. And then that's going to go in the microwave just for probably two minutes or however long it takes just to cook through and sort of soften up. Well, I think that might be as unsad as those sausages are going to get without burning. So we'll set those aside and then in with these onions. A little pinch of salt will just help to draw the juices out of the onions to be caramelised. Oh, well, those are caramelised a little bit. I'll keep going on some of them, but I'm going to reserve off about half of these onions and blend that down to make a kind of soupy stock. A little bit of water in there. And that is just onions and water and salt, so... Which I think we can now add back into the pan. That's not a nice colour. That's going to have some marjoram, one of my favourite herbs. And black pepper. I'm just going to simmer that now until it cooks a bit more. I'd rather that went a bit more brown than kind of weird beigey pink. But red onions will tend to do that. Right, it'll taste the seasoning now. Okay, it'll stand some salt. So... That's going to be in the form of Marmite, well, off-brand Marmite. It's about half a teaspoon. I had completely forgotten about the bread, so I'll put a couple of slices of that in the toaster, and then we'll have something to dunk in this kind of soup stuff. Right, there's the sweet potato. It's uh, fully cooked. Kind of shriveled up a little bit more than I thought it would, but never mind. Let's open that up. I think we can have a little bit of butter on that. And my three cocktail sausages are going to just sit in there like this because not exactly French onion soup. And then that goes in there. And I call this dish three men in a boat. And we'll just have some lightly buttered toast on the side of that then. There we go, three men in a boat. Let's get that to the table and see what it tastes like. Okay, well first, this not French onion soup. Actually not bad, considering how few ingredients that has. It's very nice and sweet. The sweetness has come out rather than the pungency of the onions. It goes well with sweet potato and Probably with little bits of sausage. Mm, that's not bad. Also not bad. So, considering what we had to work with, not terrible. Not enormously substantial either, but there's more bread, I suppose, if I'm hungry. Well, here's what we have to work with for dinner. Actually, half of most of these things, plus some bread. Now, I've got to say, lunch was not all that filling. And so I did have a little afternoon snack. I had a couple of slices of toast. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this. These need to be cooked in the oven for 10 minutes. So I'll do that. 
I don't really know what this is going to be. I think I'll probably only use about a quarter of the onion and I will cut that very fine. And then sweet potato, complete with skin. A little bit of salt, chilli flakes, and some mixed herbs. And then just to kind of bind this together, a teaspoon of corn flour, corn starch. Okay, I think I'll get my hands in there and try and squish it a bit. Right, now feel free to call this ridiculous. A pochette ring, a little drizzle of oil, and then the mixture's gonna go around the outside of that. Kind of a anti-pochette ring, almost. And really, there's no reason for this other than the shortage of ingredients here is gonna make things a bit boring. So I'm just trying to do weird things to overcompensate for that. Now the arancini, I'm gonna cook all eight of these because it's not worth putting the oven on for anything less. But I'm only gonna have four. And Jenny might have the other four, I suppose, just as a nibble to go with her meal or whatever. So those go into the oven for 10 minutes at gas mark six. Spaghetti hoops, you may have noticed, I've got a bit of a prejudice against these things. People often think of these as a kind of direct alternative to a tin of beans. They're not. This is just pasta in tomato sauce. There's very little protein in here. Whereas a tin of beans at least has protein and probably a bit more fiber in. I'm not saying these are bad, it's just if there is a choice between these and beans, beans are a better choice. Anyway, about half of that can. Now just to boost the kind of tomato in there, I've got this ketchup which is left over from the sausages, so we'll have... Oh, that's my arancini timer. Arancini are going to need a few minutes longer. Anyway, as I say, I've got half of that ketchup in there. Just a little bit of dried basil in there. Okay, so we'll get those warmed up and that should just come together in time. A couple of slices of toast. I'm just going to cut out the middles. So those look a little bit pale and wan to me, but they've had twice as long as it says on the pack. So it says 10 minutes, they've had 20. They need to stand for a minute. But that just about gives me time for this. So that bit comes out. <laughs> is this going to work? This is where I break one of my lovely plates. Oh, it worked. My gosh, it's burnt. Very caramelised. Let's just say that's very caramelised, not burnt. My lightly buttered toast. Some of my spaghetti. Another slice of toast. More spaghetti, so spaghetti on toast. And my arancini will just kind of arrange them to hopefully constrain a little bit more of this spaghetti which is now leaking everywhere spaghetti a lot of people are going to object to me calling that spaghetti infinite basil just one little leaf of basil snipped over the top some of it might even go on the food and i call this dish and they went to sea in a sieve. Let's get it to the table and give it a taste. Okay, obviously pepper. And well, here we go. So my sweet potato rushti, I went a bit over. But is that burnt or is that just highly caramelized? Only the taste will tell. Hmm. Yeah, a little bit burnt, but Burnt in a kind of caramelised sugar sort of way. Obviously sweet potatoes and onions, both quite sweet vegetables. Okay, these mushroom arancini. Well, obviously I didn't do anything here apart from heat these up. Yeah, they're right. I think the ketchup might not have been a great idea. These hoops are quite acidic now. Well, 
not so burnt that it's inedible, but definitely past where it should be. Can I have pause? Thank you. Good girl. So here's the thing, in previous episodes of this video series, having choices imposed on me by the restrictions themselves or by rolling a die was stimulating and made me think. In this particular case, it was just kind of stupefying. I think probably mainly because rather than ingredients, I had meal objects. And I don't think I'm very proud of either of those dishes today, apart from perhaps the naming. And that circular rushy thing, that's a illustration of why you don't do it that way. I couldn't flip it, and so I had to cook it until I thought it might be done. And obviously I misjudged that. Anyway, let's see if we can do better tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, bright and early, I'm gonna to go to Lidl, and we'll see what I can find there. Hopefully, I'll be able to get enough for my fiver to make some nice meals. Nice enough that I'll perhaps feel willing to impose them upon Jenny. Well, see you in the morning for shopping. Okay, well, that was all a bit of a disaster, I think. I'm not even gonna to try to score those meals. The whole of this exercise was a sort of a flop, but that's okay. There's always something to learn. I was going to just extend this video to include the whole of day two, where I go out supermarket shopping with the same budget. As you can imagine, that all went a bit better than this, by the way. But in the edit, it went way over an hour in length. So day two is going to be part two, which I'll publish next week. Let's just reflect on this one, though. What went wrong? Well, I think I just hoped that I would get more stuff in the Too Good To Go bag. I've chatted with people who really struck it lucky with these, and I think I just sort of didn't. This is only my first time using the app though, so I should be really careful about drawing any kind of general conclusions on the basis of so small a sample. And because the items in the bag were mostly made foods, there wasn't so much potential to just use them as ingredients. At least it wasn't apparent to me how I could do that. Perhaps a failure of imagination on my part. I have seen people deconstruct food items and then reconstruct them into something else, but I just have a feeling that Danish pastry soup isn't going to be quite as nice as a Danish pastry. And Morrison's maybe wasn't the best choice of place to spend the top-up pound, although it was the only choice, as nothing else was open that late. I was surprised that the reduced section in that store was so full up and that there didn't seem to have been any final reduction made. Maybe they do their final reductions in the morning and then that stuff gets all snapped up then. I did think about just not publishing this video, but I think it's important to show when things don't go so well. And besides, this episode now sets a pretty low bar for doing better next time. Part two coming soon, but I hope there was something in here to interest you, even if it was just laughing at watching me fail. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.